Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In this video, we're going to be discussing the Dursleys, Harry Potter's cruel and unusual adoptive, I use that term loosely, family. When Harry's parents were murdered on October 31st, 1981, the decision was made that Harry would be raised by his Aunt Petunia and her family. Though they hated any and all things magical, and were perhaps the antithesis of the sort of family that should adopt Harry, they were the safest option. When Lily died, she cast a loving sacrifice, protecting Harry, and this sacrifice lived on in her sister. As long as Harry could call the home of the Dursleys his own, then he was safe. The Dursleys were also massively critical of Harry. They didn't like anything that was out of the ordinary, and all of a sudden, Petunia was faced with raising her magical young nephew. Almost immediately, they were hard on him, and showed clear and obvious favoritism toward their actual son, Dudley. They forced Harry to live in a cupboard under the stairs, tried to prevent him from attending Hogwarts, and had always hid Harry's past from him. While he did eventually end up attending Hogwarts, thanks to Hagrid, and was able to get away from them for a good portion of the year, he did still have to return to their tormentous home year after year. He really didn't have a choice. He would have to return there until he was finally old enough that his mother's loving sacrifice would serve him no more. This is one of the primary reasons that Harry never went to live with the Weasleys, where he was provided with a much more caring and nurturing environment. So year in, year out, Harry returned to their home out of necessity. But when we get to the final book, film, The Deathly Hallows, a bit of a shift occurs. This is for two reasons. Number one, Harry is now 17 years old, meaning the loving protection from his mother is no longer present. And number two, the wizarding world is in complete and utter turmoil, with the danger even spilling over into the muggle world. Harry, who knows that the Dursleys will be targeted, eventually explained to them that their lives are in danger. The order is sure Voldemort will target you, whether to torture you to try and find out where I am, or because he thinks by holding you hostage, I'd come and try to rescue you. You've got to go into hiding, and the order wants to help. You're being offered serious protection, the best there is. But Vernon Dursley doesn't take this news lightly, and vehemently questions both Harry's proposition as well as the danger that he's in. I thought there was a Ministry of Magic, asked Vernon Dursley abruptly. There is, said Harry, surprised. Well, then why can't they protect us? It seems to me that, as innocent victims, guilty of nothing more than harboring a marked man, we ought to qualify for government protection. Harry laughed. He could not help himself. It was so very typical of his uncle to put his hopes in the establishment even within this world that he despised and mistrusted. You heard what Mr. Weasley and Kingsley said, Harry replied. We think the ministry has been infiltrated. This eventually leads to the Dursleys leaving their beloved home, number four, Privet Drive, in search of a new, safer, and more secure location. It's the end of an era as they bid goodbye to the famous home, the original house with the bedroom under the stairs. But where do they go next? What is next in store for the Dursleys? What happens to them after the fall of Voldemort and the end of the Second Wizarding War. Interestingly enough, very little is revealed about the Dursleys after they pack up and head off. However, there is a segment from the book and a deleted scene in the film that sort of suggests that there may be a future for Harry and Dudley. The scene depicts a moment of redemption for Dudley, who, in an effort to make things right with Harry, shakes his hand just before they depart. Harry's bully, the boy who tormented him for years, finally made an effort to set things straight and this single act did wonders for their relationship in the years to come. In fact, it is later revealed by Rowling that, despite Dudley's years of abuse towards Harry, they were later on Christmas card terms. As he grew older, Dudley developed into a decent man, very much unlike the tyrannous force of nature that he embodied in his youth. Dudley even eventually got married and had a family of his own, raising two muggled children. Harry and Dudley would still see each other enough to be on Christmas card terms, but they would visit more out of a sense of duty and sit in silence so that their children could see their cousins. This suggests that they were never quite friends, but certainly cordial to one another, perhaps stemming from the mutual respect that they gained for one another in later life. As for Vernon and Petunia, it seems as though Harry may not have seen them again, as their relationship was never particularly good. Though Petunia certainly harbored affection for Harry, deep within, she never made the same attempt that Dudley made to reconcile with him which was likely the reason for them never reconnecting. It's also been suggested that, after the fall of Voldemort, the Dursleys were simply escorted back to their home in Little Whinging, where they remained for the rest of their lives. 
But what do I think happened to the Dursleys? I think that after the chaos that was the Wizarding Wall, the Dursleys would have wanted to travel far, far away. Vernon had been working at Grunnings for 30 years at that point, and I think that this unique circumstance may have presented him with a good opportunity to retire. Vernon was always awful to Harry, and that never changed. He disliked the boy, or boy, as he would frequently call him, and I'm sure that he had no desire to see Harry after the war had ended. Though Petunia treated Harry in a similarly awful fashion, I think that deep down, she did truly care for Harry. However, even if she did want to go and visit him, she would never, as it could potentially reveal to Vernon that she actually cared for him to some extent. At the end of the day, the Dursleys relished in everything that was normal, predictable, and easy, and I don't think that they would have been able to look at number four Privet Drive in the same way ever again, or Little Whinging for that matter. It was the same place that their house was assaulted with letters, and where their son was attacked by Dementors. Harry had finally moved out, and they no longer had to care for him, but so much had happened in that house, and I think that this may have been a good opportunity for them to simply start anew elsewhere. As I anticipate that Vernon retired at this stage, I can completely imagine the Dursley family, or at least Vernon and Petunia, retiring in some tropical climate, sitting on the beach complaining and drinking pina coladas. Vernon's safe, predictable job as director at Grunnings, who made drills, would have allowed him to save up just enough money to buy a beachfront property on an island like Mallorca, allowing him to live in a tropical climate but with access to all the UK food and drink with which he was familiar. One other thing that's worth mentioning, and I'm not saying that it's canon, is that in The Cursed Child, it suggested that Petunia actually died at some point before Harry's son began attending Hogwarts. This is when Dudley returns Harry's blanket to him, the same blanket that he was wrapped in when he was left at number four Privet Drive. This is the last thing I had from my mum, the only thing. I was given to the Dursleys wrapped in it. I thought it had gone forever, and then when your great aunt Petunia died, hidden amongst her possessions, surprisingly, Dudley found this, and he kindly sent it on to me. And ever since then, well, any time I've wanted luck, I've found it, and just tried to hold it. This tells us that by the time Albus is a third year, Petunia had actually died, which is tragic in a weird sort of way, given that she likely never revealed her true affection for Harry. And that's it for this video. What do you guys think happened to the Dursleys? Did Vernon and Petunia ever reconnect with Harry, or had that chapter simply closed? Let me know down in the comment section below. Until next time, you're a wizard Harry.